In the last screencast, we learned how the event loop processes incoming requests and dispatches events generated by those requests. We also noted that callback functions enable Node to achieve concurrency without requiring a thread for every request. In this screencast, we'll learn more about asynchronous programming and contrast it with multi-threaded programming. In order to understand asynchronous programming, it is first necessary to understand callback functions. In JavaScript, functions are objects that can be passed as arguments to other functions. In this way, the function passed into another function can be executed or called back when processing is complete. Let's illustrate this with an example. In this file, we have a simple Fibonacci algorithm that accepts a callback function as its second argument. When calculation is complete, the supplied callback function will be invoked with the result as a parameter. Inside the callback, we're able to not only report this result, but also the running time of the calculation. As we can see from the output, our calculation executes synchronously. The message calculation complete does not get logged until after fib calculator returns a result. To see a callback used for asynchronous programming, we'll use Node's built-in file system module. In the first example, we'll read the contents of a file using the synchronous version of the read file method. Notice that no callbacks are used. We log the result of the read file sync call directly. As a result, our test message won't display until after the read operation is complete. In the asynchronous version of this example, we pass a callback to the standard version of the read file method. When we run this version, the I.O. operation is no longer blocking, so our test message is logged immediately. The contents of the file are logged asynchronously as soon as the read operation is completed and read file triggers our callback via the event loop. There are several advantages to asynchronous programming over multi-threaded programming. Firstly, client-side developers are already familiar with using callbacks for handling DOM events. Secondly, by using the event loop to act as an intermediary between the program and the thread pool used to execute asynchronous operations, Node developers can enjoy the benefits of concurrency without the complexity of directly managing multiple threads, which requires strategies for avoiding deadlocks and competition over shared resources. Finally, systems that create one thread per connection require a lot of resource overhead from the CPU time used for context switching to the memory required for an execution stack. In this screencast, we've seen how callbacks work in JavaScript and learned how they can be utilized for event-driven, non-blocking I.O. In the next screencast, we'll familiarize ourselves with Node's conventions for using callbacks.